How you guys all doing today, man? As you heard, I am the lead singer of Dark Angel. That's uh, kind of what I'm most known for, or should I say most infamous for. Um, I was asked to come here to talk about being a Christ follower in the world of metal. My band, Dark Angel, is kind of not a user-friendly band. We're uh, most known for being uh, on the faster side, the more grindy side, the most uh, acquired taste side. So a lot of times people will say, uh, I'm not a fan of your band, but I like you. Don't be offended. I'm like, oh, trust me, I'm not. Doesn't matter to me if you like us or not. Uh, most of the time people say, how do you go from being in a speed metal band like Dark Angel to being in a Christian band called Oil? I'm like, uh, grace of God. Started in Dark Angel about 1987-ish. Uh, about seven years, kind of ran its course by the grace of God because we probably would have ended up dead in prison or maybe even uh, murder charges. Who knows? Dark Angel was kind of uh, super fun, super crazy. Got in that band when I was like 22. So uh, started into world tours, no sleep, drinking, drugs, no rules. That was kind of our normal thing. When I tell people that, they're like, um, and you didn't see a problem with it? It's like, no. When you're in a band at that level, you pretty much have a license to sin. As crazy as that sounds, nobody tells you what you're doing is wrong. They condone everything you do. So when you destroy public property, private property, it's okay. You actually get told, these are the rules of the venue, these are the rules of the road. If you break two or three of them, that's cool. If you break four or five of them, that's great. If you can get the police to come to the actual venue, that's kind of what we expect from you. That's a great front man, that's a great band, that's what we want. And being a young kid from the streets of Norwalk, I was all in. They had me hook, line, and sinker, and after a while, you don't know what the difference is between right and wrong, nor do you care. And if anybody in this room or on planet Earth would have tried to tell me different, we would have sent confrontation. I don't care who you were. I don't care how bad you thought you were. We had an army to back us up. Yeah, we all seen the movie Backdraft where it's like, if you go, I go. Well, in Dark Angel in 1987, we had, if it's one of us, it's all of us. And we wholeheartedly believe that because we did not care about anything except ourselves. I made the transformation to oil about seven years after that. Uh, ran into a friend at church. He said, I started a Christian band. I'm like, no, thank you. I'm not interested. I'm just done with music. He said, uh, give it a try. Just check it out. See what we got going on. I'm like, no, thanks. I'm just done with music. I don't even know if I'm uh, all in on the God thing. I'm just checking this out. Well, God had other plans. Oil starred recording, making albums, and uh, me and the guys in Dark Angel, we were still tight. We were still brothers. Still to this day, we still do shows. We're still brothers. But at that point, I started making enemies, unbeknown to me. I started getting hate from everywhere. I got some good friends in this room right now that can testify to that. The secular scene hated my guts. I was a traitor. The Christian scene, I was a devil. I was a devil worshiper. I was going to hell, and anybody who spoke to me was on my side was the same. You were a traitor. There was nothing but hatred for me, and I didn't understand it. A lot of people hate when I put this out there that the Christian industry was more corrupt than the secular industry, and they're like, how do you make that claim? It's like, well, when I came from Dark Angel, I knew I was a commodity. I was just something you sell. I'm a product. Everybody in this room pretty much is a product. You sell something every day. You sell a part of yourself. If you're a construction worker, if you're a tattoo artist, if you're a computer programmer, I don't give a crap what you do in this world. You sell something. You sell a service. And when you're an artist, a recording artist, you sell yourself. Every freaking day of the week, you sell something. You don't belong to yourself no more. You belong to a record company who's paying top freaking dollar to market you 
and wrap you up in a package and sell you to the masses. So in Dark Angel, that was our mindset. So when I got saved and became a Christ follower, I thought everything's going to change because these people are like, God bless you. You're a good brother. And then they're stabbing us in the back. So by 2002, when oil had ran its course, and we had got pulled off of every Christian radio station, and you ask, why would you get pulled off a Christian radio station? Because we decided to play bars and clubs and said, Jesus said, if I've come to heal the sick. These people need to know about Christ. We're playing for punk rockers, metalheads, bikers, and they're like, you can't do that. That's unconventional. I'm like, hey, I know Jesus died, but check this out. He rose again, and he didn't say none of you are in freaking charge when he was gone. No, he came, and he rose from the dead. <laughs> yeah, right? And he's still the man. He's still my Lord. He's still my Savior. And this pastor's telling me this, and he's got this mug on his desk. It says footsteps. You know, you've seen it, the poster, the T-shirt. It's on everywhere. It's like a tagline. And I'm like, oh, that's freaking hilarious. Nice mug. He's like, oh, you like that? I don't know who bought it for him. I didn't even care. I stopped listening at that point. I told him, that's cool. You keep your ideology, and you keep all of this nonsense, and we'll just keep Jesus, and he can carry us by himself. And that day I realized one important point. I am anti-religious. I am pro-Jesus Christ. So that is my tagline. Are you a fan of Jesus? Are you a follower? Because you know it's nice to be a fan. Hey, dude, I got all the merch. Go Jesus. Team Jesus. Hey, Jesus is freaking awesome. But you know, if you're going to seek the Lord and you're going to pray to God, hey, open these doors, man, because this is what I want to do. And then God hears you and he listens and he opens these doors and you sit on your butt like God's Uber Eats or Domino's Pizza, and he's going to hand deliver that crap because you don't want to get off your butt and take a step? Really? I started hearing that from everybody. How can you, after 2002, go back to Dark Angel? You've fallen away from the Lord. Are you on drugs again? Are you just not a follower anymore? Are you now anti-Christ? I'm like, huh? God called me to do this. I have some of my good brothers in this room. Big Slice, Rob Silva, Tank, Matt Tanksley. These guys are all like, stay steadfast, bro. This is what God's calling you to do. God's going to do some work. I'm like, hmm, I don't know. Something that always touched my heart was John 8, 12. Then Jesus spoke to them again. I mean, he had to say it more than once. Why? They weren't listening to Jesus? I understand. Don't listen to me. I'm Ron Reinhardt. I'm a tattooed idiot that screams in a heavy metal band, and most of you would be sick if you went to our shows to see the crap that goes on. But no, this is Jesus. I am the light of the world. Anybody who follows me will never walk in darkness but have the light of life. So Jesus tells them, what? He spoke again. They didn't hear the first time. Are you freaking kidding me? They're not listening to Jesus. And I apologize for my vernacular, but... That's just how I roll. My band cringes when I get the microphone on stage. So I was shocked when they said, oh, yeah, we really want you to come. It's like, okay, God opens the doors. I'll be there. So we get called back to do shows in Dark Angel, but now our life's changed drastically. I'm a Christ follower. Half of the secular industry don't even like me, but my band still loves me. I'm like, you guys are cool with this? They're like, yeah, man, we don't care who you are. We love you. And then a lot of the secular people are saying the same thing. If you can bust the lyrics out, you still yell and scream, we don't care what you believe. So Jimmy, Jimmy Durkin, riff master, me and him start praying together on the phone. We start talking about the Lord. We start talking about our beliefs. And he's like, hey, man, are you going to pray before every show to get our focus on, to get grounded in the Lord? I'm like, damn straight. It's like, yeah, man. It's like, let's get our prayer on. He's like, awesome. He goes, let's pray for every show, everywhere. I don't care who sees it. And I got chills. I'm like, dude, in 1987, if somebody would have told me that, I probably would have popped them in the face. Because in 1987, I was still on probation. I had to get off probation to go on tour with Dark Angel. And I was like, no way. That same day, I'm talking to Eric Meyer, my other guitar player, we're talking about dark chapters, surviving drug addiction, alcohol, 
You know, I used to wake up doing lines, go to bed taking pills, and I used to drink all day long just to get through the day. And Eric's like, bro, I can't believe we survived this lifestyle. Now we're getting to go back and play shows. I told Eric one time in about 1990, he was going through some personal stuff. His dad had passed away. And, uh, and you know, 1990 is a guesstimation. You know, don't, don't take my word on dates. I always ask my wife on what dates are because I'll tell the same story and it'll be different timeline every time. So I apologize for that. And Eric's like, please don't pray for me. Well, 2013, we're getting ready to go back on the road. And I told Eric, brother, I'll pray for you. And he's like, can you please? Can you please pray for me? I was like, no way. God is not just opening doors. He's ripping them down. My bass player, Michael Gonzalez, a.k.a. Gons, this guy has more nicknames than anybody I know, he plays in a Christian band in New Mexico now. And he plays in about six bands, but one of them is a Christian band. I called every member of my band to say, hey, can I talk about you guys at his talk? They were like, brother, yeah, man, share whatever, share the truth. Be honest, be yourself. That's one of the most, number one things that I notice when you're at a venue of metalheads. I don't care if it's Maryland Death Fest, Hell Fest, Sweden Rock, anywhere. Look some of these shows up that I'm talking about. If you're not real, they know it. I look around the room and I see a lot of you probably have the same background that I do. And you know for sure when some guy walks up to you and he's like, oh, bro, I used to have long hair. Oh, bro, I was thinking about getting a tattoo. It's like, yeah, you're just one of them. You just try to bond with me, get close to me, try to find some common ground that we could talk about, but you're one of them. And it's... Sounds judgmental, but when you're a kid who has a drug addiction and somebody's trying to feed you a line, you know what that line is. And this is the positive. I will be at Maryland Death Fest. Jimmy and I will be praying. In the backstage area at this outdoor festival looks like trailers at a conjugal visit at a prison. And you cannot walk from your trailer to the stage without five to 10,000 people seeing you. And Jimmy and I are holding hands, praying, getting our focus on so we can go just rip it up on stage and everybody sees that so everybody knows they can walk the walk but they can talk the talk so seek and be faithful are you a fan or are you a follower some people think that sounds harsh and I'm not here to call anybody out or say hey whose walk is what because we all are running the same race that's true but we all started at different places none of us started at the same starting line some, some of us started, like me, I started maybe a couple hundred miles back, and I got a little extra weight, so I'm not going to catch anybody in this room, not even if it was downhill. Come on now. You know, but one thing that really spoke to me was we were in Hellfest in France. We, we had the pleasure to play with Black Sabbath and Soundgarden, and that was a bucket list moment for me, trust me, because I'm not a rock star. And my bass player, Gons, and I, the day before, went and ha hung out at the festival, and I met a guy who plays in a black metal band. These are bands that do nothing but share sincere hatred for Jesus. So if you have a chance, look up black metal bands. And he walked up to me and asked me what everybody asks me all the time. He said, uh, why does your God hate me? And I was floored. I was like, what? And I looked at my bass player and I'm like, sweet, he asked. I'm telling. <laughs> And I was like, uh, I'm like, sweet, let me tell you something. First of all, who told you that? Who's lying about my God? Because I'll pop that person. And secondly, I'm like, John 3.16, brother, right here tattooed on my arm. God so loved the world, he gave his only begotten son. So I start breaking down begotten for him. And I told him, dude, God loved you so much, he sent his son to die for you. I go, and here's the cool thing, my good brother. If you were the only person on earth, the only person, I don't care if everybody else wasn't here and it was just you, Jesus would have came and died on that cross for you. I go, does that sound like hate? And I broke out my phone with my Bible app. I'm like, find a verse where God hates you. Just find it. Because my God loves you. I, I don't know of any verse in here where it says God hates you. Any. And he was just blown away. That day 
me and Gons went to see his band because they are freaking huge. And they had it chained off. Absolutely, positively, nobody on stage where they play. Their intro music's playing. He's got his bass on, and we can't get back there, but he invited us. He takes his bass off and gives it to his tech, runs over there and says, move these chains, man. Let my good brothers in here. We're blown away, man. They're playing. Their guitar players start to dun, 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 dun. And he takes his bass off. Any of you are in a band? That's a no-no. You can't do that. And the reason I don't say his name or his band's name, because if you're in a black metal band and you're talking to somebody and saying, hey, what is God all about? You can get fired from your band for that. That's how serious that is when you're in a black metal band. And it gets better. I got to wrap it up soon here, but I just want to tell you this last story. So you always know that, you already know that Jimmy and I have been praying this whole time for all these shows since 2013. Our first show was in 2014 with Megadeth and Chile. So we're in Japan now. This is how amazing our God is. In case you're wondering, if you seek and be faithful, and you just choose to make that step, that first step out there, because sometimes it is scary, like this. I don't, I don't like doing this. I've never spoke anywhere in front of anybody. I don't even like to speak on stage. I always tell my band, tune your guitars, man, as fast as you can. I don't want to talk to these people. We're in Japan, and Jimmy and I are lighting it up. Two festivals back to back. And the coolest thing happened. Jimmy's wife says, hey, can I join you guys in prayer? We're like, please. Eric's fiance comes over and says, can, can I join you guys in prayer? We're like, yeah. Me and Jimmy are like almost tearing up. My guitar player Eric comes up and goes, hey, brother, can I join you guys and, and, and pray before the show? And me and Jimmy are just like, like blank face, like, yeah, please. So we're all backstage, joined hands in a circle, giving it to the Lord. And then we went out and we destroyed Japan like Godzilla that night. And it was awesome. And these are just a few things that God can do when you just take a step. Because trust me, in my 52 years, I got saved. I'm roughly 92. If my wife was here, she would give me a better date because trust me, I don't know. And I, I don't have the day thing down or the year thing down. I've never done nothing for God at all. I will pray, I will seek the Lord, and he'll open the door, and I will just show up to that place. It's like, what, Jesus, you're going to be there? That's cool. And God will show up, and he will do amazing things. I don't do anything except be faithful. And I'm telling you, my good brothers, it is that simple. You just seek and you be faithful, and it's all about God. He will do everything for us. Our burden is so light. You know what complicates this? And this is the truth. If you hear anything today, us. We're the ones that screw everything up. Think about every relationship, every friendship, every job, everything. We get in the way of ourselves. I've heard a few people say that today. Man, I will stamp that. That is the fact. We get in our own way. God wants us to have the greatest gift ever. That's why Jesus came. That's why he died on the cross. He did it out of love. He did it for each and every one of us. So that's why I picked, are you a fan? Are you a follower? People could sit here and piss and moan about everything that's in this book. I'm totally cool with that. I'm just going to follow Jesus. I'm Ron Reinhart, man. Thank you for having me. <laughs>